Hello everybody, hello Joe, welcome back. Thank you for following Amol. Privet Genie. Hello Mindelos, welcome everybody, nice to see you all. So after a long discussion about pawn in games, today we are going to start with knight in games. So here we are, we are on Lee Chess. And it was a very enjoyable discussion on pawn in games and so much to learn. And after that we are going to start with this most tricky piece in chess, this is the knight. And first we will be looking at end games with knight versus pawns. Hello Daksh, you are present. I am very well and very excited to start these end games because knight is my favorite piece since I learned chess. So most of the players they like queen the most powerful piece but for me my favorite piece was always the knight because it's a, such a tricky piece and now we will start with the end games and we will also see why it is the most tricky piece in chess. So let's begin. So again we are going to continue with the book Dovritsky's end game manual. And we will be looking positions from this book. Queen and king versus king and knight is difficult to checkmate, yeah. So first position white king f2, black king h2, black pawns on g6 h3 white knight on e8 white to play hello sabrina nice to see you i hope you are doing well so we know that a lone knight cannot win it is a theoretical draw so if we have a position with king and knight versus king it is draw also position with king plus two knights versus the king it's a draw but here they say that if the opponent king is trapped in the corner with his own pawns, there are possibilities that the knight can checkmate and win. So they write here, if the defender's king is trapped in the corner, sometimes even a lone knight is able to mate. So I want to first try to figure it out, why to play and win. Thank you for the rain star and welcome raiders hope you had a great stream we are doing a series about end games and just today we are starting night end games thank you for following hello everybody we are just starting and nice to have your raid thank you once again so this is a white to play and win so first end game, first position about knight end games. Thank you once again for the raid, Charles. So now we must not let the king come out from this corner. King g7. So this is, these pawns are going this side. Black's pawns are going this side. And black's idea is to try to stalemate in this position. That is why we have to find a way to uh, checkmate before black achieves that. Knight g7, king h1. And we need to find the idea here, not just the moves.
Hello, Mantrala. Welcome. Or King D6 for E4. So we need to find the pattern here, not just moves. Black has two ways to go. First is just to play King H1, King H2 or try to push the pawns. Yes, Mantrala. That's a hard task. <laughs> this is in fact the first position of the night and games. And <laughs> we are we are struggling here already. But no, it must have it must be easy. We just need to find the way. So I'm thinking let's start with knight f6. Now black can play g5 or king h1. If g5, then there is a simple win because we give this check, knight g4 check, king h1, king f1. And now black is forced to play this pawn and there is knight f2 mate, like that. So that is why black will not play the pawn after knight f6. Black will play king h1. Now knight g4, knight g4, if h2 again we play king f1 and there is checkmate, so black will play g5. Black will try to avoid playing h2, so there is no checkmate. Okay, so I will go from the beginning. Let's see. Let's see. White to move wins. They say. First move knight f6, king h1. King h1. Knight g4 g5 and here is the correct move king f1 we have to force black to play h2 so we play king f1 and this is the only way to win so that we make black play h2 and now we have to find the way for the knight oh there is just knight f2 mate okay okay this is just knight f2 mate here I sent the correct move for some reason, it's been checked by the mods. We only have knight board which is very active and I can't change it. Hello Siddhant, welcome. So this was in fact easy way to start. We just force black to play um, h2. Now the same position with black to play. It's much more difficult when it is black to play here. Oh my god, I asked you 100 times um, how to send link. I'm sorry, Genie, I just missed it. Uh, I don't know how to send link because we have Nightbot active. Maybe you can send us on leeches. So now, next is same position with black to play. And now black plays king h1. And this is a little bit longer task for white now. If black plays here g5, white plays knight f6, g4, knight g4, king h1 and the same idea and white mates. So let's see white uh, after... King h1, white plays knight f6, king h2. Again, black has few options here. Let's see, king h2, knight g4 check, king h1, 
king f1 g5 king f2 so we have to force black to play h2 and then we use this knight maneuver knight e3 g4 knight f1 g3 and knight g3 mate hello amul so the whole idea of this position is that we have to force black to play h2 and then find a way to checkmate there is another line here second move h2 so king h1 knight f6 if here black plays h2 knight g4 g5 knight g3 g4 and again knight f1 and this is how we win this so next one the next one is a very instructive position quite instructive hello akshay nice to see you king on h8 black king e7 pawns on h7 and white knight on a8 This is black to play and draw. Now here king f7 or king f8 that is the idea we need to think about one is draw and one is actually losing so black has to play either king f7 or king f8 i sent you link in personal message okay jenny i will check it yeah this kind of end games are quite hard so only we need to figure out if king f7 or king f8 one is draw and one is winning one i'm sorry one is draw and one is losing so it depends on the knight what color a square this knight is on and they write in the book that knight is the only piece which cannot lose a tempo King f7 because I remember this rule here that a king should go on the same square as the enemy knight. Yes, yes. King f7 is the right move. King f7 is the right move. And now we see why. So if we play here king f8, this is a big blunder. Now the king and knight are on opposite squares. And now what happens is that white plays knight c7, king f7 and knight e6. And you see white stops this square and black can't go to f8 and whenever the king moves even takes or just moves he goes to g8 and this pawn promotes that is why in the starting position we have to play king f7 and there is the rule that we have to put the king on the color of the knight square and now here knight c7 king f8 this is a check now and now king goes to f7 and you see that the white cannot lose the tempo with this knight. And he can move the knight everywhere on the board but still this is a draw position. White cannot lose tempo with the knight. Knight and pawn win easily against a lone king but there are exceptions and this is the exceptional position. And king f7 is the move which makes a draw. So it doesn't matter where the knight is on the board, we just have to move the king on the square of the color of this knight. So right now a8 is a white square, so we put the king on the light square. If the knight is here, let's say we have to put it on dark square. It is useful to note that the knight cannot lose a move in order to give the move to the opponent. The knight cannot triangulate. Does this rule apply in all cases? Not in every position. 
but in this one yes but the general idea is that the knight cannot lose a move knight cannot lose a tempo that is why we have to be careful which color square we move our king but how many moves we have to calculate for that in this position we don't have to calculate the moves we just need to understand the idea and now it doesn't matter where white moves we just play king f7 and king f8 and white cannot make progress so next one clear board king c7 pawn h2 king h8 pawn h3 c5 knight on c3 White, what about if knight g5? How do you make knight g5 there? You mean you, if you bring your knight to g5? Then our king will be already on f7 and we will move king f8. White to play. White has to try for a draw in this position. So first we need to take the c5 pawn and then try to run towards the h side. That was last puzzle yes in fact that's what i'm saying if you bring tonight to g5 then our king will be on f7 so it will be check so your knight will be on g5 our king will be on f7 and then we will move king to f8 and then how to make a progress so this you have a pawn over here and after that what to do so first move is king c6 for sure because we need to take this pawn they say that king d6 or king b6 is a mistake. If you play king b6, he supports this pawn, knight e4 and wins. If you play king d6, he supports from knight a4 and then um, this is good for black. That is why we have to start with king c6. Now knight cannot defend this pawn. If he goes to either side, we attack both the knight and the pawn. And we take this pawn so this is the beginning of the puzzle this is beginning of the position um king c6 now knight e4 king d5 so we get this c5 pawn and now black tries to get this h2 pawn so he goes knight g5 king c5 knight f3 king d5 knight capture h2 King e4, knight e4, knight g4, king f3, king g7, king g3, pawn to h2, king g2. So they write here that in such cases where the pawn has already reached the second rank or the seventh rank, the position is drawn they say the position is drawn here because black cannot make a progress in this position white will just keep playing king h1 and king g2 if push c4 so let me go back if we push c4 then king c5 and we get the pawn anyway that is why white takes the pawn and then goes to this corner and it is a draw so let us try playing from black side. 
Let's say king g6. And how to make progress? We cannot move this knight at all. Knight is defending this pawn. And if we bring the king to defend this pawn, it's a stalemate. That is why this is a draw. Also, there is one more variation in this position, in the starting position. They say another try for black was to start with king g7. So king d6, uh, king c6, king g7, king capture c5, king f6, king d4, knight d1, king d3, king f5, king e2, in g1 and now again this position is drawn because it is impossible to drive the king from the corner or to mate him the best black can achieve is stalemate so in both the cases it's a drawn position so even if black takes the h2 pawn it's a draw or even if he keeps the pawn again it's a draw so King f3 and there is no way to make a progress in this position. So next one. When will you be playing next tournament? Let's see. Not tonight. Tonight I want to study night and games. King e3. Knight e2. King h2. Pawn h3. White to play and win. King F2, King H1. We have to try to first make black play h2 and then it is a mate. So to get that position uh, we have to bring king on f2 somehow and when black king is on h1 square our knight should be on f1 and then black will play pawn to h2 and there will be knight g3 mate so we have to try to get that position king f2 followed by knight check king f2 king h1 knight check king h2 king f3 king h1 king f2 you are right you are right, king f3 is the way to begin this position. Because we cannot waste the tempo later. That is why we start with king f3, king h1, and now we play king f2. Black cannot play h2, knight g3 is mate. So king h2. And now we need to bring this knight to f1. So, not knight g3, it is a stalemate. So, how to bring knight to f1? c3. I think there are many ways, but we need to also keep the g3 square. That is why we go to knight d4, king h1. And now knight f5. Because when black gets this chance to play h2, we should have this checkmate. It should need this checkmate. So now knight f5, king h2, knight e3, king h1, and knight f1. c3, d1, then black will play h2. So here, if we play knight c3, d1, then black will play h2, and it's a stalemate. So here we have to go knight e4. And again, black can't play h2, and then again, the same idea. And we have this very nice checkmate in the end.
knight g1 where knight g1 here you mean knight g1 then king h1 the idea is to bring knight to f1 that's the idea thank you for following chess student that is the whole idea of this position to bring knight to f1 and then win yes that was very nice so next is king g1 rook b8 pawn on h2 pawn h7 black king d3 rook f3 knight a1 white to play and draw So we have to try to force exchange of rooks in this position. Rook b1, idea rook b3. Yes, that is where we begin. Rook b1, black has to play knight c2 and then rook b3 check, we can exchange the rooks. But they say that it is not draw if the pawn is on h7. Black can try to win that. So we have to make this pawn go all the way to h3, the position we just saw before. And that is why we start with rook b7. We force black to move this pawn. And now black cannot play rook h3 because if rook h3 supporting this pawn, we play rook b1 and if knight goes here, we have this keyword. So black has to move the pawn and look at this very nice idea. h6 white plays rook b6, forcing black to move this pawn all the way to the h3 square. h5 rook b5 and black has no choice at all in this position rook b4 h3 and now we fix this pawn on h3 we play rook b1 attacking this knight knight has only one square and then we give this check and we reach the same position we just saw before this and this is a draw because now white will play king h1 and king g1 very beautiful idea forcing the pawn to go all the way to h3 King h1, pawns h5, black king e8, knights on e6 and knight f5. What if we take the pawn on h5? How do we take it? Because black defends. Black pushes all the way to h3 and black is supporting the pawn. The closer the passed pawn to the edge of the board, the more difficulty the knight has dealing with it. The rook pawns are especially dangerous. Here is simple yet instructive example. White to play and win. Yes, it is white to play and win. Yeah. 
yes yes 9g7 this is simple yet instructive as said in the book so now thank you for raiding thank you for raiding with the party only one wow welcome raiders and hope you had a great stream we are having an end game series with night end games today we finished the pawn end games and now today we are studying with night end games thank you for following and welcome hello how are you doing lima thank you for following i appreciate your support so now it's a long way for the king to go and support these pawns and try to push it so we start with knight g7 check look at this very beautiful move knight g7 and now we are actually forking the king and knight so knight will take this knight capture g7 and now h6 we are attacking this knight and knight has nowhere to stop the pawn knight can't move anywhere next is h7 even if black plays king f7 we play h7 and black cannot stop this promotion of the pawn this is the solution White king a8, black king d1, pawn on h3, white knight on f5. And this is white to play and draw. So this is pawn going here. King is quite far away. Knight e3. Yes, Brian. King e2. Catching the pawn is the idea. Yes, we have to find a way to stop this pawn somehow. And we need to find the pattern, not just the moves here. So if we just play knight g3, then black will find a way to promote h2 and then king will go there and attack the knight. Thank you for following. The king will stop this knight. That is why they say here there is a pattern to stop the rook spawn. So if this is a rook spawn already on h3, we need to have a pattern with the knight and we have to move the knight on these squares. This is the square. And if we move the knight like this, then we can catch the pawn and stop it. And there is no way for black to make progress. And we have to keep the knight in this square. So if we play knight g3, it's a wrong move. Or any other move, it's wrong. So we play knight e3 now. It's a check. And again, let me draw this very nice square for the knight. King e2 and you see what happens knight g4 we are stopping this pawn now king f3 let's say this thank you for following k simple yes we go knight h2 king g2 then again knight g4 and if king g3 we keep knight on e3 and if pawn to h2, now there is knight check and we take this pawn. So we need to understand that we need to keep the knight in this square. Yes, you are right. So 
so this is the idea of this uh, example we need to understand that this is the square that we should go for if we want to stop the rook spawn and black cannot make progress here if king f3 again knight f1 and you see the knight keeps moving all the way and h2 knight f1 check and takes this pawn and it's a draw the next position is also based on this idea king is on a8 black king d1 pawn on h3 and knight on f5 knight had to be in opposite color from pawn or else deliver a check uh, that idea this is a different idea brian we just need to find the square to play the knight okay we saw this yeah this is same idea in fact the same position and in the game they say white played knight g3 white played knight g3 in the game which was a blunder black played h2 and you see what happened king b7 king e1 king c6 king f2 and if knight h1 the knight is trapped so knight e4 and king g2 and after that black won this game yeah but the king is very far here so no time to bring the king knight g3 and black pawn on h2 and this is the position for analysis so i will set it up with black to play the knight has set up a barrier against the enemy king so now this time the king is a little bit further on b7 who not only can't cross the e2 and e4 square but also is denied e3 and d2 so black can't go to e e2 e3 e4 so these three squares are blocked by the knight because if king e3 there is knight f1 so these three squares are blocked So that is why now black has if black wants to win he has to go from either this side or this side which is a long route so let's try both the sides king d4 king c6 king e5 again these three squares are locked king c5 king f4 knight h1 king f3 king d4 and you see this is how white makes a draw in this position because now the king is little bit near yes now let's see the opposite side so again these squares are blocked and also king d2 is locked because of knight f1 check so black has to go this side king c2 king c6 king d1 king d5 king e1 so these are the locked squares that is why black has to go far away king e4 king king e4 king f2 and white simply plays king f4 and makes a draw here or also there is way to play knight h1 followed by king e3 
Yes. So this is how we make a draw. Lots of love from Sataran. Thank you, Amul. Thank you for following. Hello, Srinidhi. Welcome. And Tan seats you too. White King G2. So these are the ideas that we have to remember and try to use them in, in more complex end games. Pawn D5, Pawn A5, Bishop c4 black king g7 pawns on h7 g6 f7 e5 b7 white to play one moment i forgot the knight <laughs> in knight end games i forgot the knight black knight on e4 yes White to play and win. So again, this looks like a very complex position, but we just need to find ideas that we learned before. Do you offer chess lessons? I do, but very selectively, I do. I reached 1750 today in rapid. Well done, Srinidhi. Keep going. Pawns are equal right now, but we have a very strong pawn on a5. We can try to attack this b7 pawn. And I can see some ideas in this position what we can do. Yes, I think I saw. So this looks like very complicated position, but it is not actually. So, see, we played d6. And we have to try to attack this pawn. Knight d6. So we just play bishop d5. And no matter what black plays, we just take this pawn. This is the simple idea. We don't have to calculate so much. Because knight can't take. Knight takes, then a6. And this pawn is unstoppable. So this was the idea. Let me check. Let me check. Mm. Yeah, d6, knight d6 and bishop d5 with a big advantage for white. Yes, this is the idea for, for us. So now next position. King c7, black king c3, pawn on h4, white knight on h8 with white to play this is a composition by grigorev in 1932 
fight to play and draw. You know this. So before this position, we learned two ideas. If the pawn is rook file, we have to either try to get the knight in this square or try to bring close, bring the king closer and stop this. So one of these ideas. We can't reach this in time because if we play knight f, f7 or knight g6, h3 and there is no time enough to bring knight in this square. Knight f5. I don't know the solution, so I'm also thinking right now. Knight g6, f4, then check and knight g3. But we know that knight g3, um, let's try, we can try it out. So knight g6, thank you for following. So black will play h3, knight f4, black will play h2. And then check, knight e2, um, king will go here, knight g3. And we have forced a barrier like that, yes? This same position that we saw before. We have reached this position, you are right, you are right. What else black has? So after knight g6, h3 is forced, we are forcing black to play this moves and we make this barrier. Yeah, it must be right. That was quite fast. But one moment, one moment. They say that this idea is wrong in this position. The knight cannot arrive at h2 in time. At most, it can only prevent a promotion by taking the h1 square. So if we play this move, knight g6. Here, the best move for black is to play king d2 and not king d3. So king d3 was a mistake that I played. Black will play king here. And now you see, black is already ahead. Black will play king e1. And here black wins. So king d6, king f2. And white is not in time with his king. Knight e4, then just king g2 and black wins. So this idea does not work here. So the correct way to go for is to play knight f7, h3, knight g5, h2, knight e4 check, and the question is where should the black king go? <laughs> Who puts their knight on h8 in real life? <laughs> And now black has to think where to move the king. If we place king d3, then we play knight g3 and we reach that drawing position. Now the king cannot go to d2. If here black plays king d4, white has knight f2. Again, king cannot go to e3 because of knight g4. And again, king c3, king d6, king d2, king e5, king e2, knight h1, king f3, king d4, and white is in time to make a draw. Like that. 
<laughs> yes. So let's see the main line, knight f7. h3, knight g5, h2, knight e4. King c2 is the main line. King c2. And here, white plays knight g3, good move. Again, not knight f2 because of king d2, as in the previous line. King c2, knight g3. King d1, king d6. King e1, king e5. King f2 and king f4. Wow, what a, what a position this was. Looking so easy, but it was so difficult actually. King h2, black king c5, pawn b3, and knight a5. White to play. The knight defends the pawn. This is the next um, next section in this chapter. The best way for the knight to defend the passive pawn is from behind. Here the knight is immune from capture since that pawn that would put the knight outside the square of the passive pawn. White to play and win. Yes, this is simple, but it defines the idea, what they are trying to say. I sent you text on leeches. Okay, Tanzits, I will check it after the stream. I hope it's nothing urgent. Yeah, knight c4 and d2. So black's idea is to play king b4 and attack this and this same time. So what we have to do when we get such situation is that we need to support this pawn from behind. So knight c4 and knight d2. So we start knight c4. And now even though black attacks the knight, we can just ignore it. Because black cannot never take this knight. We play b4 and queen. So this is the idea. Always support the pawn from behind. Next is a composition by Mark Toretsky in 2000. White king h1, black king e5, knight c7, white pawn c4 and pawn c5. White to play and win. Hello Cinnamon, welcome. How are you doing? Thank you, we are also doing great. Today we are starting with night and games. We, after an extensive discussion about pawn and games, we did complete that chapter. Knight b5, king e4. Fast hot time, I'm sort of slow. Okay, I'm all. 
Hello Rucha, nice lessons. Thank you. Welcome Chess Max. Hello Danish, we have international master in our chat. Nice to see you. There should be many ways. And b5, king e4. King g2, king d3, and knight d6, right? So let me think. Knight b5, king e4, king d3. And now knight d6. And now knight d6. Knight a3 will be a mistake because black will play king here and king b4. So we just go knight d6 now. Defend the pawn, king d4. And when I, he attacks, we now go knight b5. And then this is winning. So there are two ways to play this position. First is knight b5 as we saw. King e4, king g2, king d3 and knight, knight d6. This is winning. Or we can start this position by knight d5, king d4 and knight b6. So same idea just in different ways. Hello VVCS. Thank you for following Abhishek. So now, uh, one moment. Thank you for following guys. So now next is a tragic comedy. Next is a tragic comedy. Thank you chess warrior, triangle and introver. Do you remember the game between Giri and Shankland? No, I don't remember which game. So now, let's just see this tragic comedy. We have section in this book called tragic comedies, which are like positions from games, real games. And something funny yet tragedy, tragic happened. In g5, knight on f2. By the way, we have new emote here. I will share with you. We have new emote for this. Go, go, go. Thank you for following. So, we can... this is very cool emote. Go, go, go. <laughs> Alright. So, now here, this is a game between Nimzowicz and Rubinstein in 1911. Hello Chess Warrior, welcome. <laughs> Nimzovich liked him some comedy for sure. So this is supposed to be white to play and win, but white made a mistake and this game became a draw. King b5, black will play in f4, and 
The motto on your wall is perfectly fit for you. You're the most calm chess streamer I ever found. Thank you. So here black's idea is that black wants to take one of these pawns, e5 or g4 and then try to exchange the last pawn with f6 or f5. Knight e4, then black takes on g4 or king f4 also possible. Knight uh, abhishek after that black will take the g4 pawn, king g4. So in general black will take the g4 pawn after knight moves and then go back to f5 or g5 and then play f6 making a draw. Yeah, flashback to yesterday. I know what you're saying. Very tricky in games these are. <laughs> White King is so far. Knight d4. I mean knight e4, f6 and d7. So after knight e4, black will play king f4 and take the e5 pawn. Knight d3, yes. So now here they say the best square for knight in this position is d7. So we need to keep the knight on d7 and it is winning for white. Because then we stop even f6 or f5 and then we bring the king. So the answer here, the win for white is possible by knight d3, I think, one second. No, first move, they say king b4. King b4 first move, or king b5, doesn't matter. King b4 or king b5, king f4. Thank you for following. And now knight d3. King capture g4. Knight c5, good move. King f5, now black can't play f6. King f5 and knight d7. And this is winning for white. And then white brings the king and wins the pawn slowly. So instead in the game between Nimzovic and Rubinstein, white played first move knight d3. And this loses a tempo because now black plays f6. e f6, king f6, knight f2, king g5. And king is too far now. e5, king c4, e4. And this was a uh, game. Um, draw was agreed here. Because after king d4, king f4. And next move e3. So this is a draw. One moment. I need to check the line. What happens after uh, king b4 and f6. Oh, just knight e4, so that is why it's not possible. Nice position. Thank you for following. Yes, Salombo, I was also wondering. But just simple knight e4 and black white takes the pawn. Nimzo Rubinstein, what year? This was uh, 1911, played in Karlsbad. Now we have another tragic comedy. Anishkiri played Shankland and resigned after b6 where it was drawn position. I think I remember, but I don't remember the entire position. I remember this uh, incident, this game.
bishop d6 black knight d3 pawns on e5 g4 with black to play So this is a game between Keras Lengiel played in 1969 and they write here the game was adjourned here and black resigned without continuation so it is similar to what you are saying word 20 so game was adjourned and black resigned he assumed that his e and g pawns will be lost and white must inevitably went up two pawns ahead but this is not the case and there is a defense for black by the way today james plunder is streaming about keras right I did not see him see it but uh, I see the title that he was showing games about Keras hi Nightbot <laughs> Nightbot is a very special member in our chat So let's see what is the defensive plan so the plan is they say simple black has to play knight e1 black has to play knight e1 and if white plays g3 knight f3 we already have a defensive position because now this pawn can cannot be attacked and knight can defend this pawn from h2 There is another way there is also possible knight f4 making this pawn move g3 knight e6 bishop e5 knight g5 in f4 and knight e3 so even if black loses this e5 pawn we just need to defend it from h2 bishop d6 and knight h2 and there is no way white can win this g4 pawn and black just keeps moving either king c8 or king d7 or just knight back and forth and this is a draw but this was more complicated than before king f8 black king b5 knight d2 pawn on b2 and black pawn a5 white to play f7 then black will play king b4 yeah let me think about this first what if we just start moving the king what is black's idea i see black's idea is to play king b4 king b4 a4 a3 and when white plays b3 to play king c3 
or even a2 yeah what am i saying just a2 right so this is black side yeah and exchange this pawn knight c4 and a3 so how do we do that Maybe some weird knight b3 knight a1 so let let us try knight b3 king b4 knight a1 a4 king i will i will move it on the board and see as suggested um here so a4 knight a1 And black also queens so it does not work a3 knight c2 check oh right all oh, right so we are saying knight b3 a4 so king b4 after a3 there is knight c2 check this is the check and we just take the pawn wow we missed this Looks like the answer, Danish. Let us see. But that was cool, knight a1, a3 and then knight c2 is just check and we take the pawn. Well done, Hanfin, for finding this idea. Yes, they have just two moves in the solution and they say knight b3 king b4 and knight a1 and white wins and white wins this barrier is very solid and there is no way black can advance the a pawns because a3 is met by knight c2 and this is the way white wins wow knight b1 no that's a draw right any other way black will just play king b4 and king b3 king g6 King b5, white knight on c6, black knight e6, and now from here on, opponent also has knight. So before we were looking at knight versus pawns, and now we will be looking at the original knight in games where both sides have knights. Yeah, rare case when putting the knight in corner is a good idea. What if black goes around to b4 to d4 d1 a1 to get the knight? I think white king will reach until then. So in examining the knight versus pawns end game we learned quite a bit that is useful about knight in games and we can use this idea also in these in games
white to play and win white to play and win good night versus bad night knight d4 then black takes the knight knight d4 then black takes thank you for following kpp Knight a7. So many ideas here, right? But we can get lost if we start trying to calculate every line here. So we just need to find the idea instead of the moves. And here they say the idea is that we have to sacrifice the knight here. So knight d4 is first move. Knight d4 check. And now we deflect this knight. And they write here the deflecting knight sacrifice is almost universally employed technique in such end games. And white plays a brilliant move king f6 to stop this knight from getting any closer to pawns. And now there is no way black can stop this pawn they say. So in the game black played few more moves. Black tried to go knight c2 h5 knight e3 so that there is knight g4 check now and white just simply played king g5 stopping both these squares again knight c4 h6 knight e5 this is the check coming at 7 Knight f7, king f6 and white wins like that. So in this position we just need to know that the king can stop the knight after sacrificing, after deflecting this knight. King f6, very important move and we just need to stop the knight getting closer to the pawn. Hello Masood, how are you doing? Without king f6, can't white promote then black will get in the zone that we just saw this was the square so black will get in this square with the knight so knight e6 h6 and this was the square and we just keep moving the knights in this square and no way to make progress let's say i can even play king c5 at 7 is not possible because of knight f8 and just knight moves and defends this that is why king f6 is important we have to stop the knight getting in this square <laughs> so difficult to draw <laughs> looks like a diamond like a diamond in the sky like Rihanna song shine bright like a diamond knight b5 knight c4 pawns on a2 f4 g3 h2 black pawns at 7 g7 and d2 
Why do you think Judith Polgar could get so strong at chess? There are many reasons for that. There are many reasons, many factors. So let's not get into that for now. About women's chess in general. Have you ever studied imagination in chess? Of course, it's one of my favorite book, Danish. I carry that book everywhere when I'm playing in tournaments. Yes, yes, by Pataka Pintashvili. It's the book I like to solve when I am waiting on airports and, you know, traveling. So, it's one of my favorite books, favorite tactics books. Yeah, in fact, some of my friends, they, um, they like ask me why I carry this book all the time. They see me with this book all the time. Do you play blindfold chess? Uh, not so much, but I can try. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did you solve every puzzle from it? Almost, I did. I must have solved more than one, of course. Because I enjoy ta solving tactics very much. Black to play and win. Yeah, this is easy. This is easier than before. We just distract, dis deflect the night. I'm sorry. Deflect, right? What is the word? Yeah, deflect. <laughs> Not destroy. We just deflect the night. We play knight a3 check. And now after knight captures the knight, king a2. And next move, there is d1 queen. And no way to stop it. If we first play the move king e2, it's a mistake because white plays knight c3. And then can even start pushing this pawn. Leading to a complicated endgame. So just in one move black wins after knight a3. White, king f5, knight d7, pawn a5, b3, c4, d5, e4, at 6 white, king f7, knight e8, pawns on a6, b7, c5, d6, f6, and h7. How many chess books have you read? I have read many many books. I don't even remember so many of them. Hello Hayden, welcome. Any suggestion how to solve that book? I find it tough. Which book are you talking about, Maddie? So many pawns in this position. Six pawns versus six pawns. Imagination in chess. You can start from the very beginning, from position one. And if... Um, it's not easy positions, of course. So you can try to set it up on the board. And, and let's say give like 15-20 minutes for each position. It's a very long, like, long book. It will take lots of time, but if you really want to finish it, that's the way to go. 
I remember I used to uh, set up the board and set up the positions one after another for many many hours and solve it that way and I think um, it's been a long time since I saw, the, saw that book but uh, in that book there is like stars given to the position so one star, two star, three star based on difficulty levels so start with uh, the lowest one and then when you get the, those positions right go for one star, two star positions after that which book will you recommend for opening theory there are so many books on opening theory and first of all it's important that which opening you want to learn so before you start choosing the books i would suggest that try to understand your own style of chess what you like how is your style and study your own games and then based on your style decide to choose one opening so positional players they they should go for systems with d4 tactical players they can go for systems with e4 open positions and things like that aggressive players can choose gambit openings uh, and lots of sicilian why not so that is first step you can you have to do try to analyze your own games and then decide which opening to choose you can even play online many games to find out what positions you like what pawn structures you like is it better to solve on board rather than on chess program it is uh, about preference really chess max both is all right for me some people have uh, suggestions on that that try to solve on the board one or the another but i am not like that i am i will say both is okay just choose what is comfortable for you Knight b6 maybe. What is really happening? So many pawns here. So again we need to find one idea. I'm thinking what is... Uh, Knight sacrifice, knight f8, maybe possible? Is it possible to play knight f8? Sacrificing the knight so that we can play king e6. King d7, but I am not sure. Knight b6, then black will play knight c7. And really there is no zugzwang because black can even just play king e7 and king f7. So black knight is defending all the pawns, so he will just keep going f7, e7, and knight c8 probably, I see what you're trying to say, one moment. Oh, alright, so knight b6, he will go king e7, knight c8, and king d7, and there is no way to continue, so all these three squares he can keep moving actually. Knight a4 after that. And what is the idea, Masood? So let's say I play king f7 back. Where to get this knight actually? There is no square in particular where we should bring our knight. It is already on the best, one of the best squares on d7. We can get on e6. From a very long route from b6 a4 let's say like this from a very long route to e6 but still not much is happening he will just put his king on e7 knight capture c5 then pawn capture c5 so for me only way to break this position is to try knight f8 we are attacking this pawn, so black has to take, and maybe after king e6, we can go for this pawn on the king on the queen side. I'm not sure, let me check the analysis. 
Yes, knight f8, good move, king f8, king e6. This knight sacrifices allow the king to invade the enemy camp. Black is in Zugzwang. Because if he plays king g8 here, white plays king e7, and his knight will be trapped soon, actually. Where to go? Knight c7, we can even take this or we can just we can just take this and knight a it just is too bad knight goes back then we can play here and push this pawn and win so black is in zugzwang in the game black played knight g7 giving back the knight hg and let's see the game continuation it's a long line but let's see king d6 h5 in e7 h4 d6 h3 d7 h2 both queens queen f8 sorry in h7 was played and after many moves, white won this endgame later. So in this position, we have to just understand this idea that we can sacrifice the knight if black has a very bad knight. So his knight is stopped by his own pawns. And that is why after king e6, black is in Zugzwang. Now next position is very beautiful. I think I saw this position many years ago, but I don't remember the exact answer to this. Knight g8, black knight b8, pawns on e4, g6, black pawns e6, e5, b5 and a4. White to play and win. Yes, looks very inter in interesting and instructive, both. Who is your favorite chess player? I have many favorite chess players. Of course, Vishwanathan Anand, then Bobby Fischer. Kasparov, Judith Boker, Knight f6, Knight c6, g7, Knight e7. But how to win this endgame? Black will of course sacrifice the knight. So we need to find a way to promote without that. Knight e7, then knight c6. So let's say knight e7. Black will play knight d7. Knight c6, king b6. Thank you for following Beto. Welcome.
How about making posters? Hmm. I'm I'm looking at a very interesting idea. I'm not sure if it works. I'm not sure if it worked, but how about we start with knight e7? Now knight d7 is forced, almost forced, right? Yes, knight d7 is forced. Now we give this check, knight c6 check. Now there are two ways. If black king goes to a6, we can give this check. If king a6, we just give this check and we promote. So that is why black has to play king b6 here. King b6. And look at this line. I think it works. Knight capture e5. Thank you for following, David. And now black cannot take this knight. Because if black takes, then g7 is queen. And just look at this beauty of chess. Knight f6, knight d7 check. And e5. And white will queen next move. <laughs> This is so nice position if, it, if this is the answer. And now we are threatening to play g7. f6 square is controlled. So knight capture e5, g7 and queens. There is no other way, right? It's knight e7, d7. Let me check the answer. This is a composition by Ring in 1920. Knight e7, good move. Knight d7, knight c6, knight king b6. And knight e5. We are right. e5 and white wins. Wow. But why knight f6 fails? So when is knight f6? First move knight f6. <laughs> Bout Sundar. Is there an explanation here? Because black plays knight c6 and after g7 knight e7 and black just stops the pawns and black is ready to give the pawns All right, next one. King a7, black king h6, knight on f3, black knight c4, pawns on a4, b5, black pawns b6, g7, h5, white to play and win just knight d2 so let's say knight d2, knight capture d2. Then white has to think about a5 or king b6. And we also need to consider this pawn will start moving. Yeah, position is right. Fight to play.
but a1 white will uh, queen first right white will queen first so if if this is the line we are talking about white will reach first and stop it with queen b2 Yes, looks like that, Beetle. If knight d2, I was also just thinking about that. If black plays knight c4 and a6, we are just in time. We are just in time. So, what is the defense for black after knight d2? Hello, Daksh. What happened to you? Why are you happy and angry? I guess we need to calculate after knight d2 takes a5. So this, this, a5 takes and maybe some knight moves. Yeah, knight e here and then maybe knight here. Maybe. Maybe. But then king b6. Yeah, looks like that. Let's check. Knight d2 is right first move. I just played in a rapid arena and won a lost game. Listen how. Okay. I'm learning Hindi. Is it okay if I put some Hindi in the chat to practice or strictly English? We prefer here English because we have um, everybody joining from all the countries. So it's better if we all speak in English. So now knight d2 is the beginning. Knight d2. Knight capture d2. a5. b a5. b6 knight c4 b7 and he plays knight e5 and they say that here king b6 is a mistake here king b6 is a mistake they say the natural looking king b6 is a mistake because black plays knight d7 Here king c7 is met by knight c5 and black wins. Here king c7 or king a6 met by knight c5. King c6, knight b8 check. King c7 and a4. So white takes and both sides promote and this is winning for black because black has two extra pawns so that is why here after knight e5 There is only one way for white to win this game. And that is to play king b8. King b8 followed by king c7 and we stop both the squares. 
they have given like two exclamation marks for king b8 king b8 double exclamation mark if a4 why just place king c7 if knight d7 check here then king c8 if knight d7 then king c8 knight b6 then just king d8 and now here uh, knight c6 check king c7 knight b4 and king b6 is winning because now after knight d5 we can no why to take the pawn we can mm, where to move the king let me think maybe just to c6 right yeah just to c6 and check then we just play king b5 wow king b8 was not expected here otherwise king a8 if we play king a8 then black just plays knight d7 and stops the knight stops the pawn knight and games are really crazy So two more positions in this chapter so let's finish this chapter was that an actual game let me see yes this was actual game between Zabov and Gross Peter. Of course, my pronunciation is not right, but yes, it was indeed a game played in 1984. And and White did found this move in the game. Wow. Did you read my long message? One second, one second, Daksh. I saw a very big message, but I was so much into this position. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Looks like you have a very event you had a very eventful tournament, right, Daksh? And you had a position that we saw in the stream. What was the position? Just write it in the chat so that we know. <laughs> he would have seen this move way before this position. Yes, crazy. Do you live in India? Yes, I live in India. I'm streaming from my home right now. So come on, two more positions and let's finish this night and game chapter. And tomorrow we start Bishop and Games. King f3, uh, knight d1, pawns b3, b2, c2, f2, h4, g6, black king, g8, knight e4, pawns on g7, h6, d4, c5, b5, a5, and black to play. G6. Does anybody know which book? This is Dobrit Keith and Game Book, this one. I guess you're all familiar with this. I guess Daksh is writing the position in the chat. So let's wait for him. To tell us what happened in his game i can tell just by puzzles you must have seen them david hello sabrina 
This is black to play and win. Hello, Christoph. Good luck. Good luck for our end game studies, yes? Knight c3. What a move. Okay, let me read what Dr. Zweishinzak is writing. It was a position where white had two on one pawns on king's side and black had two on one pawn on queen's side. Both kings are very far away. The race is between pawns. Wow, you had a pawn race, pawn and game, yes? That's excellent, excellent. So, I'm happy for you that one of the end games that we saw in the streams you had in your games. So, it's already helping us studying end games. So, let me think about knight c3. So, knight c3, white knight does not move. So, white will take bc3 and then a4, right? That was the suggestion. <laughs> wow. Does it really win and white cannot stop it? Looks like that. Let me play it. Knight c3. b c3 and a4. Hmm. <laughs> I was Dovritsky in the game. So this takes then just this. And knight cannot stop it. If cd4. Then we take this. We don't wait for knight c3. Yes, let me check the answer. Well done. Well done, guys. Before I finish uh, reading Dr. Zweishin's Zag message, you already found the solution. This was also from game Olympiad 1976. The goal is achieved by means of a knight sacrifice followed by pawn breakthrough. So first move is knight c3, good move. b c3, a4, c d, not this, c d cd4 and white resigned because after c3 we just play a3 anyway and black queens and yeah what a move this was all right so last position in night and games and also for tonight's stream King f4, black king a8, knight c5, black knight on f8, and pawn on e5. White to play and win. When will be next stream? It will be tomorrow, 10 seed. So we, fin we will finish night the end games now with this last position. And then tomorrow it will be bishop end games. So they are also quite tricky. And there will be different bishop end games. Like same color bishop end games, opposite color bishop end games. Bishop ag against the pawns. So that chapter is going to be quite long. Hello, chess to go. King f5, King b8. On the first look, I feel knight d7. So knight d7, we have to calculate also. Knight d7, knight d7, e6, knight f6. <laughs> you want to finish? Yes, for tonight. 
we will be. King g5, uh, King g5, King b8, and then knight d7 is possible, I guess, or not. King b8, then knight d7. <laughs> For everybody, we are studying endgame from Dovret's keys. But is there any difference between King F5 and King G5? So King F5, will it be like some fork on this D6 or G7? <laughs> I don't know what, but there is difference, yes? Knight d7, there is knight g6 drop. Yeah, generally I like to set up the position, think for a little bit and then see the analysis. So that helps me understand the analysis even more. Knight d7, knight g6, yes, yes. <laughs> so... You are right, Daksh. If it's like you suggested the move and then you found a reputation. So knight d6, there is just knight g6 and takes the pawn. <laughs> just push e6 and draw. Can't see difference between king g king g5 and king f5. I guess, um, I guess the difference is, okay, I don't know this, but maybe something to be like fork on d6. So let's say king a7. Something like that might be possible, right? Like d6. Okay, I'm not sure entirely, but still... That might be the difference. Let's see. I hope you have a second stream today. Mm, I will think about it. But for end games, it's enough. Two hours is enough for end games. So uh, let's check three six. To achieve success, one must remember the triangulation technique. So they say King G5 first move is right. They have not given any explanation, but maybe the, that was the idea that it lands in fork after D6. Your stream content is very high. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tenzits. So now after King G5, King a7. If black plays here king b8, then king f6, king c8, again king c7 is knight e6 check. So king c8, king g7, and now this knight is trapped. This just we take and play king f7. So now the main line is king g5. And after king g5, black plays king a7. And now king f5. The tempo is lost, they say. And black is in zugzwang. The zugzwang is that if now black goes back to a8, then maybe knight d7 and you promote with a check. After e8, the tempo is lost. So let's say black plays here king b6, knight d7 check, 
and e6 is winning. And here black is in Zugzwang after king f5 because now if he plays, uh, let's say king e8. And after this, the king is on b8 and we can queen and there is no knight d6 check. That is why this is the Zugzwang that we are want to achieve. Of course, this is very difficult. And they say that if we play first move king f5, it is a mistake because, because black plays king a7 and now white is in Zugzwang. Here knight d7 does not work because black just takes and e6 knight b6 so this is the main reason knight b6 e7 and knight c8 and if we just try to play the king let's say king f5 king a7 and king f6 Black plays king b6 with a draw. Why this is draw? Oh, because now the king will be in check. That is why knight d7 is not possible. <laughs> this is just too difficult. But this is a Zugzwang. That's why we have to reach the same position with black to play. That is why we make this triangulation. And now black does not have move to play at all. Alright. With this we can stop this very complicated yet very beautiful night in game chapter. Just pass like and go. <laughs> yes. It's about triangulation. You spotted King A7 right away. I did not know the idea, but I was just trying to understand what is the difference between King G5 and King F5. So I thought maybe there has to be some kind of fork. That is why. How am I supposed to remember all this information? Don't try to remember all the information, just try to understand the ideas and then we can use these ideas in different endgames. So I guess we can stop here for now. And tomorrow will be bishop endgames. So many, many players like to study bishop endgames, especially the opposite color bishops. And also they are quite practical positions because we get them in games quite often. <laughs> just see it once and don't forget it. That's a good advice. Just try to remember everything like a machine. Thank you everybody for joining in. And let's just make a raid. So there will not be more stream tonight. So don't wait for me. I will join tomorrow. Thank you for following. And by the way, uh, this Saturday, so today is Wednesday, this Saturday in India, we have the biggest festival. So it is called Diwali and it is festival of lights. So like in um, Europe and USA, how you have Christmas as the biggest festival in India, we have Diwali. So it's quite exciting um, here and everybody's looking forward to this festival and we are all uh, preparing for it, preparing sweets at home and then buying presents and a lot of things. So it's so much exciting right now. So it will be this Saturday and it will go for a few days, like four or five days. And it's a celebration in India, the biggest celebration of the year. So I will also celebrate with you and hope you join me and keep Keep being with me, give your company. 12 hour Diwali stream would be great. Imagine my um, my relatives come to visit me and talk to me and I will be in 12 hour stream. <laughs> oh.
Okay, so let's make a raid now. Oh, James Splunter is streaming, so let's raid him. Bring them in the stream. I will try. Will you do Goody Shank Land Endgame? No, I will not do it because I'm. I don't know that endgame really. So, these endgames I'm reading from the Doritz Kids book. I'm, of course, I'm not an endgame, right? Endgame expert to give suggestions on all the endgames. Does your channel have a PayPal account for sending there the gift? For some reason, I cannot use Twitch. That's very kind. If you if you want to support the channel, you can uh, subscribe to the channel or click on the donation button on the on my page. I rate Anna chess, but she is not um she is not playing chess right now. That's why I want to rate somebody who is playing chess. Okay, let, let's raid James Planter. He is supporting us very much. So, I want to say hello to him too. And I think uh, he is going to play a tournament on Saturday with, uh, with followers on his team. So, he was telling me that he, he made a team on leeches. So we can all join his team and play for him this Saturday. He can tell more about it. We, we will ask him. Okay, so have a good night to you all. And see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow with Bishop and Games.